one hour, such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who traveled by ship, sailors, and as many as trade on the sea, stood at a distance and cried out with, when they saw the smoke of their torment, saying, What is like this great city? Okay. Where do we stand today? Well, at the present time, the U.S. national debt is $10.6 trillion. $10.6 trillion. I, I haven't been able to figure it out, and maybe some of you in the television or radio audience can help me sometime figure it out, but I haven't figured out how you pass a stimulus package of almost nine hundred billion dollars where do you get the money? I, I, I mean as best I can tell folks you only have two choices you either have to print it or you have to borrow it uh, maybe there's a way I don't know but that's only two ways I know to get it. Either got to print it or you got to borrow it. If you print it, then you fire inflation like you can't believe. And if you borrow it, you just put us deeper in debt. And we're already at 10.6. Do you know what that means to you? Huh? Do you know what that means to you? Let me show you what that means. Back in 1900, we had a debt, national debt of 1.2 billion. That cost every one of you $16. Now you probably could handle that. Well, by the time we hit 1950, uh, our national debt had risen to two five, $256 billion. That meant it cost each of you seventeen hundred dollars by the time we reach 2009 the national debt is ten point six trillion that means that it cost each one of you thirty four thousand seven hundred and ninety five dollars that's the national debt now that really doesn't worry me too much I, I believe that we probably can handle that. One fellow said, if you just, if all the women took the change out of their purses, we'd probably tear, cover that. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, that doesn't worry. You want, you want me to tell you what worries me? When we talk about national debt and what we're faced with, well, I'll tell you what worries me. This is what worries me. It's not public debt that worries me. It's private this is the private debt. Fifty-three trillion dollars. We are a nation of debt. That's what we are. A nation that operates by debt. That's the reason it says that in one hour, all gone. Over. Dear friend, uh, Maybe you can say what you want to, but I can tell you right now, it's not like being in debt as we once were. Today, it is totally different. Let me mention just a couple things further. Bird flu. I'm talking about something that affects the whole country, the world. You can see the spread of it. That in red is where bird flu. Last week we found out that now India has become affected with bird flu. And then, of course, other countries like the United States and Australia and others uh, will eventually have that. And I can tell you, uh, if that isn't handled some way, we can have a pandemic that will be unreal as far as the world is concerned. As the days of Noah were, 
so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. I think of all the scriptures in the Bible that bother me most is the one where it says and did not know. That they had just gone about life, weren't concerned, didn't know. And here Christ has given all the signs that you and I should know. There shouldn't be any question. We should know. And yet it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be the coming of Jesus Christ. Years ago, there was a city in Italy called Pompeii. Pompeii is a very, very nice area. The climate is just wonderful. And this city in Italy was known as a very, very special place. And people came there, and uh, it was kind of a resort. Because just outside the city, a little ways, was a huge volcano called Vesuvius. Now, uh, that volcano was there, and uh, oh, sure, it spewed out a little bit of lava, you know, ever so often. But nothing that really frightened the people too much. But that volcano provided some very nice things for them because all around Pompeii, they had hot mineral springs. And people would come in from everywhere to bathe in the spas in Pompeii. It was wonderful, marvelous. They enjoyed it immensely. Oh, yes, there had been some people that had told him, you got to get out of here. This volcano is going to erupt, and you need to get out of here before it erupts. But uh, it was nice. It was nice living in Pompeii. I mean, the climate was ideal, the spas, all the things there. In fact, even back then, they had hot running water in their homes. Everything was there. And then one day, Vesuvius erupted. And the city of Pompeii disappeared. I mean, in a matter of minutes, the whole city disappeared. In fact, it so thoroughly wiped out Pompeii that it was forgotten. And for 1,700 years, it was not known of. And a German archaeologist was reading in the library and came across where it mentioned Pompeii. And taking a group of scientists, they went over and they began to excavate. And today, they have excavated Pompeii. You can go there today. And you can walk down the streets. And you can look into the houses and the shops and everything that's there. It's interesting. Because you see the lava came in so quick and so fast that it covered that city that it caught the people exactly where they were. And they found out that as they were excavating, they would come to places where there was a hollow spot. And they found out that they could tap into that and pour plaster Paris in there and they could break it open and they would get a mold of the people just exactly like they were. Because when the lava caught them, it covered them and their body cooled the lava down and it made that cavity. And so as you walk down the street, you can see a whole family sitting around the supper table eating. You can see this man pushing this little cart running down the street.
just exactly